you. But you need to remember that we spin within those 24 hours as well as also moving around the sun. So let's look at how that affects us in terms of the seasons. So when the part of the planet is towards the sun, surely it's going to receive more sunlight. Therefore, it's going to be hotter. Therefore, that part of the pl planet will be lit up for longer as it rotates. OK, so here it's the closest to the sun. So what season do you think it's going to be if it is closest to the sun at this point in time? OK, so you are correct. It would experience summer. OK, so the diagram on here shows the northern hemisphere. So the northern hemisphere is up where we'd have the North Pole. OK, so this is where we've tilted ourselves now at the 25 degree, 23.5 degree angle. So the northern hemisphere here. OK, it's now closest to the sun, OK, which means that that part of the hemisphere for those three months is going to experience summer. OK, so if it's going to be summer in the northern hemisphere, what season will the yellow part here? So the north, the southern hemisphere experience. Pause the video and see if you can tell me the answer. OK, so let's just recap hemisphere before we move on. So we know that hemisphere is our Earth is split into two different parts. You've got the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere, and it is split by the equator, which is that invisible line that goes through the middle. Now, did you get the answer right? Ah, well done. So that part of the Earth that's away from the sun is going to experience winter. Now, that's quite a mind-blowing to think about, that at two different points on our planet, one place is experiencing summer, and the other is experiencing winter. And that also means that other parts of the country will also be experiencing autumn and spring at the same time. I think that's quite a phenomenal thing to then try and get your head around. So here we can see the southern hemisphere because it's the furthest away from the sun. It has got to be in winter because it's not getting that access to the sun. So what will it be like in the southern hemisphere at this point in the Earth's orbit? Orbit. Orbit. That's not a word. Orbit. So... Like we said a minute ago, one will experience summer and one will experience winter, but then there's other points in the Earth's orbit where neither parts that are in those hemispheres are going to be tilted right towards the sun or right away from the sun. So which seasons do you think they will experience above? So here we know that the red one here, they're going to be experiencing, so this part here is going to be experiencing summer. So what's it going to be when it's actually closer to the sun, but not quite to the sun? So what season might that one be? And this one here, well, it's not exactly up furthest away from the sun, so experiencing really cold weather, but it's sort of in between going from the cold weather, moving towards the warmer weather. So have a think about what seasons do you think they might be experiencing? Okay, so we know that one or the other of them has got to be experiencing either spring or autumn. OK, so the northern hemisphere here is going to be experiencing autumn because we know that after summer, so it's been pointing at the sun, we know that it's going to get further away from the sun now, which means we head into autumn. So this is when we're looking at September to November. So it's actually heading towards now being in the colder parts so further away from the sun. But that means that the southern hemisphere down here that was already in the winter position is now going to be moving closer towards the warm weather. So this is when we come into spring. OK, so you can see that as we start to rotate, that's how we work our way through the seasons, depending on our position that we are facing the sun. So which season will it be for the southern hemisphere in this diagram? So this is the southern hemisphere down here. So what season do you think it might be? Ah, OK, so it would be winter for the summer southern hemisphere, OK, because it's the furthest point that's tilted away from the sun. Which season do you think it will be for the Southern Hemisphere, though, now in this diagram? Ah, OK, so now it would be autumn, OK, because we've gone from winter, so it's neither tilted away from the sun and it's neither tilted towards the, uh, towards the north either, which means it's now moving toward winter. So that's moving towards being colder. But now what season do you think it would be for the Northern Hemisphere, which is the red triangle? Absolutely. OK, so it's got to be winter because now it's tilted at its furthest point away from the sun. But what if the Earth's axis had no tilt? So let's consider the three points. Who would you agree with? So we would only have summer and winter. We would have random seasons throughout the year or we wouldn't have any seasons at all. Pause the video and just have a think. OK, so if the Earth's axis had no tilt, there would not be any significant change in a location's tilt be it either facing towards the sun 
or away from the sun as the, as the Earth actually orbits it, which means it would always be either uh, autumn or spring, okay? Which would then mean that if it's autumn and spring, we would know that actually the timings of our day wouldn't then really be much different because we know we have longer days in summer and shorter days in winter. So the timing of the days is only really affected in those two seasons. Now, as you can see here, if we don't have our tilt, we're never going to be changing positions, which means you will either experience one or the other. So at that point in time, we wouldn't have any seasons at all because you'd always be experiencing the same weather pattern every day because every 24 hours, you're going to be turning on that same axis. So it's never going to change. So well done if you got that one correct. So. Let's have a look at this plenary on here. So this graph shows the length of days in the UK throughout the year. Now I want you to pause the video. What do you notice looking at the key and looking at the data information? What do you notice about the average hours of daylight? Okay, so the days actually start to get shorter in the winter months compared with the summer. Okay, so what do you think the notches are here in the graph? So if you look at it, so daylight here goes from about, you know, four, four o'clock towards five o'clock and then suddenly hits all the way up to about half past six, pushing seven o'clock. But then here we go from having time that's sort of around half past five, suddenly dropping down to about four o'clock. So what do you think those notches might be? Ah, wow, well done if you clocked this. So these notches actually show the practice of what we call daylight say it's daylight savings time so this is where you get to two different points in the year where you're told to either move your clocks forward an hour or you're told to move your clocks backwards an hour so in october when we hit the winter times this is when we move our clocks an hour backwards so this makes our days then shorter and the night times longer but then when we come around to the summer we start hitting the warmer weather in March. This is when we move it one hour forward. So this is how we get that gap in our times to make up for those additional 0.5 days because of the extra timing that we have. So because the days are longer in the summer months, that daylight savings time is used to make the most of the daylight. So that's why in the summer we have days that could last as long as 16 hours. But during the winter, we do not use the DST. So we call this just standard time because we go back to our normal time. And this is because our days then go back to being the standard shorter time. Now, anyone that has electronic devices, and this always confuses me every single time, due to digital technology now, most clocks or digital devices will actually change the times for you. But when I was your age, because we didn't have analog clocks and we didn't have digital phones or watches that did it for you, we had to remember. So it was always easy to know whether you'd done it or not because your clocks would always say different times in the house. But nowadays, what happens is you'll hit one o'clock on the following morning, it'll carry on as normal. But then at 2 a.m. it goes back to being 1 a.m. again. Okay, so it actually changes the time automatically for you. So putting these clocks forward one hour in the summer means obviously we have more daylight in the evenings. So obviously when you leave school or I leave work at 5, 6 o'clock, it's actually lighter. And it means that instead of having that extra hour in the morning, it's tacked on to the end of the evening. Otherwise, you'd be up really early because of the blasting from the sunlight. Now, not all countries use this depending on where they are in relation to the equator, because obviously if you're close to the equator, you're always going to be a lot close to the sun in general because of the amount of heat that you experience from the sun. So as you can see here from the map, if I move my fizz, these different colour codes here show you the countries where it actually gets used. So any of these countries that sit right on the equator don't even don't even use the, the idea of the daylight savings times of moving time forward and backwards because they experience a very similar length of days all year round. But the countries up here that are in the different hemispheres as we get further away from the equator do tend to use it. Some of them have changed from using it, but obviously they're in different time zones so don't necessarily need the daylight saving. Okay, but certainly for us, we use that because of where we are in location to the world. So your task for today, I would like you to use the sheet. So you've got this sheet at home, okay? And you've also been sent home some research cards as well. Now, if you have access to printers and scissors and glue stick, especially if you're at school, then you can cut this out and you can stick this on. But if you do not have a printer, don't worry. All you need to be able to do is you can draw the diagram out into your books quite easily, and then you can just copy the information off the facts cards. So what I would like you to do is you need to label the correct seasons. So you need to look at the map and show how close they are 
to the sun at that point in time and then use the additional information to record down extra facts that you know about those specific seasons okay now if you're stuck and need help then you might want to rewind back to the beginning of the video where we look at the different seasons because that might help you give you some additional information okay don't forget once you've done that when you it's your day to send in your work you can send that in to me and i'm more than happy to then give you some feedback but have a go and see how you get on good luck you five